just finishing up my work. I'll be there shortly. See, I told you I'd be there shortly. <laughs> sleeping. Me too. I always struggle to sleep when I'm not with you. <laughs> How about I help you sleep? Because I can just sleep with you. Maybe you need a little help. I can be that help if you want. <laughs> of course, that sounds nice. Just rubbing your head. your day was okay good bad just okay there's a lot of days like that aren't there Tell a story. <laughs> Let me think. Hmm, most of the stories I know are so dark. Hopeful, happy stories. <laughs> I really don't know too many. <laughs> no, that's not because they don't have them, darling. It's because I was raised German. <laughs> Our uh, nursery rhymes and bedtime stories tend to be quite spooky. And, well, I guess there are some that are quite nice, but I don't know them by heart. I wasn't told the nice, happy ones when I was younger. My mother was more concerned with keeping me out of trouble. So she told me stories about going out at night, causing you to get eaten, going into the woods means you'll encounter the fae. If you're a bit too greedy, you'll get eaten up by mice. <laughs> Make one up. A long time ago, there lived a fox and a cat. The fox was angry and alone, and so was the cat, for different reasons. One had been exiled by its people, and the other ran away from home, fearing that if it didn't, it would die. 
the fox being the exile was filled with anger and hatred for its people. It felt like it had a greater purpose in life, and it needed to fulfill it, and that its people just didn't understand. And so, upon trying to fulfill this greater purpose, it had made a mistake was exiled for it, and had wandered ever since alone. The cat, however, had ran away from home, as it felt that its life was in danger. Its family had turned increasingly violent towards it, and so she left. One day, the fox was journeying through a forest, deciding to rest. Eventually, it had met the cat, whom, not trusting anyone, plotted to attack the fox. The fox, however, had foreseen this, and decided, instead of fighting back, and letting anger win. It felt perhaps this person was just hurt like me, and so tried to prevent the cat. The cat did not care for the fox's friendship or kindness at first, but eventually, with the plot to hurt the fox, came a settling guilt a realization of what one was going to do, and had decided to call off the plan. The fox and the cat, then devoid of reasons to fight, became friends, traveling together, working together, and learning from each other. You see, the cat was far younger than the fox, and the fox was very smart, as is their nature. So there was much that the cat could learn, and did learn. The cat learned how to survive on their own, how to travel on their own, safe places to sleep, find food and water. To this day, the two, while not traveling together constantly, meet up every now and then. Both of them having decided to go their separate ways for certain times. The fox still searching for their greater purpose. And the cat still trying to find forgiveness for all the horrible things she had done in the past, but no longer feeling like she was lesser because of them. All thanks to their friendship. <laughs> Did I really come up with that on the fly? Mm. Let's leave that up to the imagination, shall we? Hmm. <laughs> <sighs> that a spookier story? <laughs> Are you sure you're trying to sleep? <laughs> you know I'm good at telling spooky stories, right? Uh. 
Are you sure? Look, okay. <laughs> so long as you're not scared of the dark, this one shouldn't be too bad, okay? There exists a cave very far away from here. Very far. So, nowhere near us, okay? That exists a creature of pure terror. The creature is made of wood, or at least seems so to most. It takes the form of a mannequin. It creaks, it chitters. But it is a living thing. And in that darkness, it knows all. The darkness can't be seen through, strangely enough, with any sort of thermal imagery or night vision. It's as if it's suffocating everything. Light only travels so far in it. Like it's being swallowed up. And the creature can be heard stalking wherever this cave is. Deep into it. It waits. The creature is also said to create hallucinations. It's said to cause so many problems for anyone who enters. As if it's toying with them. It will sit at the edge of your light, hissing at your back, trying to grab you. And every time you shine your light at it, it's gone, as if it teleports. And the worst part is that if you're in there long enough and you start losing your mind, the creature is said to show you an illusion of escape, which only leads you closer to it. And then, once you think you've just about left, snatch, and it grabs you. Now what happens next after that? No one really knows. <laughs> no one exactly comes back from that now, do they? Hmm? Why is it a mannequin? Hmm. Spooky reasons? <laughs> I mean, I don't really know. I've never seen it myself. I hope not to. Why are mannequins scary? I mean, to some they might be. I mean, I certainly wouldn't want to be in a mall after dark. <laughs> the amount of mannequins, I would just see human-like figures at the corner of my vision and just, what is that? <laughs> Humans are strange. They have so many survival instincts just still there. And it makes them really weird. Obviously that sort of humanoid figure at the corner of our vision thing is supposed to protect us from other humans or things that look like them. There's a common thing related to the uncanny valley. The sort of idea of Oh, why do we have this function to tell us that something is barely not human? Ooh, so spooky. <laughs> Honestly, it's probably because we evolved alongside other humanoid creatures. Like Neanderthals, for example. And so these humanoid creatures are threats to us, and so we need to realize, are they human? Are they not human? Stuff like that. Um, and 
And so that's my view of Canny Valley exists. At least, I, I think so. <laughs> I mean, who knows? Maybe there are some spooky alien creatures lurking among us. But I doubt that. Aliens might exist, but why would they be interested in us? And if they can fly through space so very fast as to get all the way to Earth, why would they care? Maybe to study? I mean, there's plenty of games where obviously you're defending from an alien invasion or commanding an alien species and you invade another planet. But reasonably, when you think about it, there's really no reason for a lot of aliens to invade or even interact with us. Other than just to see if they could. <laughs> Which curiosity is quite the motivator. Imagine we just show up one day and there's a space station up there just examining us. <laughs> That would be really spooky, wouldn't it? I'd like to meet an alien one day. I think that would be interesting. The issue is probably we would both have to be isolated from each other. Because of diseases. No immunity. That's the scariest thing. Is that reasonably? All their fancy technology, so long as they come down onto the surface, if they decided to just not filter whatever they breathe, they could theoretically just die to disease. Contaminate their suit with our atmosphere, take it off, and boom, infected. But they would probably have countermeasures. I mean, if they <laughs> if they're smart enough to get into space, they're probably smart enough to know germ theory, don't you think? Probably. Maybe they've evolved on a planet without like diseases. For some reason. What would cause that though? I'm not smart enough <laughs> for this. <laughs> I'm not smart enough for this discussion. I'm just saying things and hoping it works. <laughs> um, what do you think aliens look like? I think they look like little green men, like Martians, or like greys, I guess. Like the, the typical gray skin, no hair, big black eyes, that kind of alien. It's weird that Martians and greys are so similar, like design. Hmm. Weird. I do wonder if there's life out there and what it's like. Imagine if we were just a little nothing in the middle of like a huge galactic empire. Imagine how cool that would be. Or terrifying. <laughs> I mean, if we were in the middle of a galactic empire and they didn't interact with us yet, I don't think they would interact with us now. Maybe? Who knows? <laughs> How are you feeling? Sleepy? Yet? <laughs> I love you. I love you so very much. <laughs> Want me to talk more about aliens? I mean, who 
there's a lot of things. There's like the, what's it called? Um, it's a paradox. Um, the one where there's like a lot of evidence. Or well, not, not a lot of evidence, but like a high chance, like a high probability of aliens, but like no evidence of them. Like the amount of like theoretical habitable worlds is so high. Like unless life is so extremely rare, then yeah. Right, the Fermi paradox, that's what it's called. <laughs> I don't know who Fermi is, but I know that's what it's called. But it's just a weird feeling, looking up at the sky and just thinking that something's out there, you know? I can understand the people who want to believe in aliens and stuff. Like, I believe they exist, I just don't think that they're what we expect, you know? I don't think, like flying saucers, faster than light travel, I'm thinking like a microscopic speck, <laughs> like how we started. Or people like us that are still bound to their planet. But who knows really? It's just a, an interesting thing to think about. What other cool alien things do I know? <laughs> um, the wow signal's cool. This burst of energy that just swept along the planet a while back, a while, a while back, and just was detected. It was so out of nowhere, and we'll never get a chance to figure out what it was. Ever. Isn't that weird? What about ghosts? Do you believe in ghosts? I believe in ghosts. I think they're weird. Why else would certain things happen that just don't make sense? There's got to be something supernatural, right? Something we don't understand yet. It has to, has to be something like that. Because there's so many things that just don't make sense. And things only make sense when we don't have all the information yet. Which shows that we don't know everything yet. And I don't think we ever will. But I don't think we know enough about ghosts given how common they are. How many times have you just been sitting somewhere and just flop, fell off, something just falls off the counter or your desk? Isn't that weird? Just gone. No, ghosts aren't going to throw things at you. I won't let them. Hmm. Let me lay back down.
Sing with me till I saw a scrunched up. <laughs> I tried. 